This is Dr. Cynthia Clark, acupuncture physician, applied clinical nutritionist, and creator of Energy Evolution. Merry Christmas! It's such a wonderful time of year, isn't it? Uh, so today is, let's see, December 18th. And that means that there's lots of wonderful things going on. And during this time, uh, we're actually having a little bit of a season change in, in Sarasota. It's been a little bit cooler than it usually has and a little bit damp. And this is often a time that people tend to get a little bit sick. So I wanted to talk about what happens in that environment because it's a little different than you might think and also what you can do to help that and then talk about one of my favorite herbs to use. Okay, so in this time of year, we have a little bit as the, uh, there's a there's a formula called PV equals NRT, and what this what this letters stand for are the pressure and the volume, and then N and R are constants, and then T is temperature. And basically what happens is, as the pressure and the volume change, so we talk about barometric pressure when storms comes, comes through, then our, the temperature is also changing. So all these things are in flux, and it's a very different environment than it usually is for our body. And basically what happens is we get a little wiggity-whacked. Specifically, as our bodies are trying to to regulate to that temperature change and also to regulate to that pressure change at the same time we're walking around and especially in Florida like we don't know what to wear <laughs> it's like are, is it cold am I wearing a jacket am I am I am I just wearing a tank top a spaghetti straps is it I mean yesterday I think it started out and it was really chilly in the morning and then it was really hot in the afternoon one day I wore a sweater dress in the morning and I had to bring a change of clothes because it was so warm in the afternoon like it's all just changing all the time all the time all the time when we get hot of course our bodies heat up our pores open up we sweat in order to cool down but we're also a little bit more susceptible to pathogens at that time why does that happen that happens because our lungs come very close to the surface of our skin in these particular areas. We call these wind points. So they come up through here, and that's why you'll see the Chinese Mandarin colors that tend to cover this whole, this whole area here. Okay, so one thing that you can do to stay free from uh, wind invasions during the holidays is to make sure that you keep your wind points covered. So bring your cute little scarf or shawl with you. Gentlemen, have a jacket or at least make sure that you're wearing a shirt that covers these areas. Uh, if you sweat, then make sure to change into dry clothes immediately or best of all is to make sure you have some layers. So bring that extra jacket or light lightweight jacket or have it with you. Of course, if you're in colder climates, then you're already doing the layers thing because you got that wired and you just want to make sure that you're um, that you're cooling off, that you're venting at the same time that you're protecting those wind points. So, okay. So what happens in the body when we get sick? It Most of us think of it this way. I walked into a room, somebody was sneezing, then I started to sneeze, I caught their bug. Well, the problem with that is that everybody else in the room was exposed to that same bug and if some people get it and some people don't then that means that there's a way to not get the bug so how do we go about not getting the bug louis pasteur father of modern germology spent his entire life studying germs and germ theory and disease and in and, and really making us aware of how many bugs there are out there in fact there's so many critters uh, that there are more bacteria on the back of my hand then there are humans on the planet. So if you're trying to stay clean and sterile this holiday season, or if you are a germaphobe, then I have news for you. Uh, there, It's not possible. <laughs> you're not going to stay, you're gonna do your best, of course. You're gonna wash your hands with hot water and soap is the best way to, to stay disinfected during this holiday season. But we're exposed to bugs all the time. In fact, most of them are airborne. And that's pretty tough to stay clear of. Uh, but the good news is it's, that's not really what it's about. In fact, even Louis Pasteur on his deathbed said that everything he had studied his entire life, it wasn't the right direction. Specifically, what he said was, it's not the germ, it's the terrain. It's the environment that that pathogen is in. So if that's the case, then that means that we can do something about it because we can change the game. We can change the environment. All right, if it has to do with the environment, what is the environment we're talking about? We're talking about the cellular environment, specifically what our cells running around in our body are kicking around in all the time. Do they have, uh, like if we picture them traveling, do they have nice, easy access to that highway and free flow and they can get to where they're going or they can hop on that bus and they can do the thing that they need to do? 
or is it the sort of thing that there's a lot of traffic when they try to get on and instead of being able to quickly get onto the highway, they have to sit and they have to wait. This analogy is a great way to talk about that the state within our body. We refer to this as dampness or phlegm. So if you've got easy access to the highway and, and those cells can get right on and everything flows smoothly, then probably you don't have very much dampness in your body. But if there's a lot of congealed, stagnant energy that's not moving around very well, then very likely you have some dampness or some water retention or some phlegm retention in the body. And there are ways to mitigate that. So one of the things that you can do is you can make sure not to eat the foods that contribute to that dampness and phlegm. So for example, those are biggest category is going to be dairy. Um, so eggnog would be the top of the list. Ice cream would be the top of the list of things to avoid during this time of year. Make sure that you, if you're, if you're at all worried about getting sick, if you feel like things are a little off or you're starting to get a bug and you've got any kind of upper respiratory infection, then those are substances that you really want to avoid. And the reason for that is because they're they're mucus generating. So they're going to suppress your immune system with all of that heavy cream and sugar that's uh, that's harder to digest. And at the same time, it's, it's also going to gunk up the works, congeal things, add more mucus to an already thick mucus state. Now there's a good chance you intuitively have that sense. You probably intuitively know that if you're feeling really snotty up here, you don't want to have a bunch of eggnog because it kind of feels like the same thing and it's going to feel a little gross. But you might not know the bit about ice cream because a lot of times people associate a sore throat with wanting to put something cold on it. So uh, you definitely don't want to have ice cream during this time. However, you might want to consider having some sorbet if that's the thing you really got to do. Uh, if you got to do one or the other, this is really more for a kid's thing because adults, we know that we don't want to sugar bomb bugs because that's what feeds the pathogens, but uh, it is a great way to, to soothe the sore throat. So if you got a little tyke that's got to have something, just don't give them ice cream, give them sorbet instead. Okay. So when the terrain gets off, our colds start in our gut. It's the environment. It isn't, it isn't like, I sniffed in this thing that you were that you were exhaling, and then I got the bug. It is the it starts in the gut that the environment of the gut got off, and when it got off, then it uh, it prompted this cascade of deterioration that started in the gut, and then eventually you felt it as an upper respiratory infection or maybe stomach flu, something like this. So. Um, so let's talk about one of my very, very favorite herbs for this. And it's an herb called, and it's for all gut issues with one exception. Uh, and it is called slippery elm. And the reason that it's one of my favorites is because of its mucilaginous nature. So again, it's got that kind of snotty-like texture. We're going to call it mucilaginous so it's not to gross you out. And what it does is it helps to heal the lining of the stomach and the intestines. So the the when I was first introduced to this herb, it was when I had had an H. pylori infection. H. pylori is a bacteria that's responsible for stomach ulcers, and it was really messing up my gut. And uh, when I finally figured out what it was that was causing me the problems, and I started experimenting with what to take, slippery elm was the was the number one thing that really changed the equation for me. And then eventually I found a formula that had slippery elm in it that is even more phenomenal for this specific thing. Um, but slippery elm itself is a, is, a, is a really great herb. It is the inner bark that you wanna use. And um, you can get this in powder or you can get this in capsules. This is one of the herbs that um, the color of it, it's, it's an inner bark, so the color of it is actually a little bit dark. Uh, and that's what it's supposed to look like. So if you get a pure white, very pretty form of slippery elm, you got poor quality. That's not what you want to go for. Um, it is also, you know, it's very mucilaginous. So what you do is you take the slippery elm powder and you add water to it. You don't add slippery elm to water because it's going to clump and make it really hard to to dissolve. Instead, you're going to do it the other way around. And the ratio is going to be um, five tablespoons and then you add about a cup of water to that. So again, you're gonna add the water to the slippery elm. And this can be used both externally and internally. Uh, by the way, it was a Native American remedy 
for external wounds, you know, that they would put them right on the area of injury and it would help it heal. They would also even use it as a food preservative. So they would like make a little uh, container with the bark on the outside and the inner bark on the inside. And then they would put their food right in there and that would keep and contain and preserve the food. Um, but the, so in addition to the healing of the gut, slippery elm has also been uh, regularly used for failure to thrive in children and in older people. In fact, it is said that George Washington's, uh, George Washington lived off of this at Battle Forge. Uh, and it's also uh, been used as food. So because it helps to heal and because it's so sustaining. So it's very, very strengthening, tonifying. If you are taking medication, be sure to take this uh, an hour before or two hours after you've taken your medication because it's highly absorbent and so it'll block the absorption of the medication. And we wanna make sure that you're, if you're taking something that you're, you're using it for what you intend to use it for. And I mentioned that there was one digestive condition not to use this for. So, uh, so slippery elm is phenomenal for H. pylori. Um, it in H. pylori lives in symbiotic combination with candida, so it's part of the protocol to help heal that. Um, it's also excellent for diverticulitis, for ulcerative colitis, for Crohn's disease. All of these things are really, really good. Um, the one thing not to take it for is any condition that has an issue with high fiber. So SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, is the one time that you really want to avoid this, this herb. Um, there, and by the way, buy, you can buy this online. Uh, you want to make sure to look for the inner bark and the organic version of it. That's very, very, very important. But one of my favorite, just, you know, I'm always a fan of the grocery store cure uh, because I want to be able to help people, including myself, if I'm not in my clinic and I don't have all of the awesome things that I have. So, you know, I have the, I, have, I seek out to have the absolute best ingredients to be able to offer to my clients uh, and to have for myself. But I also want to know what to do if I'm out in the middle of nowhere, like I'm going out for um, a sabbatical vacation in the Smoky Mountains in a couple weeks. And like, I want to know what, how to heal myself if I get out there and I get into some sticky wicket out there. And there's a tea, there's a brand of tea called Traditional Medicinals. And they have slippery elm in a few of their different teas. One of them is in throat coat. So as you can imagine, that slippery elm helps to heal the mucilaginous tissues in the throat. And then another one is in herba, I'm sorry, yeah, herbitessin, which is their version of a cough tea. Um, and, it, and it works really well and it helps a great deal. So again, the upper respiratory infection is the end of the story, hopefully is the end of the story. Uh, if you have this, then, then we can definitely help you. But also know that the slippery elm is a great way to get started if you are if you have any sort of digestive issues or if you're having upper respiratory issues, if you are especially if you're prone to upper respiratory conditions, then this is very very very, very beneficial. Uh, okay, so I'm Dr. Cynthia Clark, president of Longevity Wellness. That's good medicine. Have a great holiday season. Stay happy and healthy.